paying over $9,000 a month just so he wouldn't see any other women. Bro, what? A little bit. Some time had passed when all of a sudden Phoenix felt an uncomfortable feeling coming from his stomach. Oh my god, was he stabbed? And that's when he saw a knife lodged in his Bro. Head. Waking up in surprise and terror, he looked back up to see Yuka arched over him. She's sitting so nonchalantly next to the body of the person that she just killed. At Wait, that's her actual page? Yandere, I love you, XD. I think your behavior is so cute, ooh woo, yandere anime girlfriend. <laughs> This is the real life Yandere girl, the strange case of Yuka Takauka. It has 3.2 million views and it's by Coffee House Crime. She was Captain a sweet, soft spoken young woman. Nobody would have expected her to do what she did. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another espresso case by Coffee House Crime. Lesser known solved and unsolved cases in less than 10 minutes. Now, this case is a bizarre one, not the type I'd usually cover. Today, we're looking at the case of Yuka Takeyoke and her victim, Phoenix Luna. Thanks for following. She's considered to be a real-life yandere in Japan. I'll cover that definition in a moment. All right, I hope you're ready. This is the case. <laughs> After this guy just said, uh, I'll explain the word yandere in a minute. And all the weebs, I bet, got all excited. Been like, oh, I know what that is. I watch anime. <laughs> Our short story starts in Tokyo, Japan. It was October 2018, and 21-year-old Yuka Takeoki resided in Shinjuku City. Shinjuku is a oh, special district in Tokyo. Wait, when was she born? He resided in Shin Shinjuku oh, no. City. Okay. Well, she's 21. She Shinjuku was 21. Shinjuku is a special district in Tokyo, known for its buzzing clubs, karaoke rooms, and upscale restaurants, all of them shrouded by skyscrapers. Yuka was living an alternate life, or at least by Western standards. She dropped out of university at the age of 19 to become the manager of a hostess club in Shinjuku. Let's go! Hostess clubs are popular in the nightlife industry of East Asian countries, typically hiring female employees to serve drinks and provide thoughtful conversation to male customers. I and want to Yuka drop out. was also a fan of anime, a style of Japanese animation typically aimed for both adults and children. She was so much of a fan of anime that, that she would often post pictures of herself dressing up and cosplaying as some of her favorite characters on her Twitter and Instagram pages, still up to this date. She, was a she is objectively individual. attractive, though. The type of That's person who initially wouldn't say much, but grew confidence the more she knew. There's nothing wrong in saying that. Generally laid back and sweet, not the type you'd expect any problems from. Back to anime. One of her favourite types of cosplays was of Yandere characters, a specific type of personality. Yandere's are generally kind, nurturing and lovable women, ones of which that eventually turn violent and possessive over a love interest. Can you see where this is going? In October that year, while still working at a hostess bar, she met a 20-year-old man named Phoenix Luna. He was also a host at a nearby host bar called Fusion Nightclub. He looks like an absolute fuckboy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he looks like he's definitely juggling like three other women, at least. A host at a nearby host bar <clears throat> called Fusion just Nightclub. Cheating. Host bars are the same as hostess bars, just hiring male employees for female customers. <clears throat> and Phoenix Luna was in a game of his own. He was very popular amongst the hosts in Shinjuku, and often was in the bar's <clears throat> leaderboards. A lot of his female patrons often returning for his bartending services. <clears throat> now just to point out, this is all safe for work. Host bars and hostess bars are strictly PG. At least officially. Other than having things in common, Yuka and Phoenix were in the same industry. They understood each other well from a professional point of view. And with their late night work schedules matching, it meant that they had a lot of time out of working hours to connect as friends. It was due to these reasons over the following weeks and months that the two grew closer to each other, and eventually started dating. The relationship wasn't all fine and dandy though. Although the matching hours gave them more time to see each other, it also created some tension between the two. With Yuka and oh. Phoenix both working in the same industry, one designed to generate money through flirting, 
it posed and bad risk for the green devil. Yeah, I can't imagine being in a relationship where like their literal employment is about flirting with other people IRL. Even then, it would be one thing if it was like all online through like messaging only and then that's how they make their money, which I still actually I still wouldn't do that. But in real life, in person, bro, like they're going to cheat, bro. And oh boy, did that work for Yuka. Over the following months, she grew more and more possessive over him often monitoring his whereabouts, and even checking on his phone when he wasn't looking. She grew so ever increasingly jealous over Phoenix, that eventually she, she outright bought his services from the bar, paying over $9,000 a month, just so he wouldn't see any other women. Bro, what? A little bit strange, don't what you think? What the fuck? Fast forward, and it is now May the 23rd, 2019, 9, a few months Holy after shit. the two had started dating. Things were going pretty well for the two, and despite a few tensions here and there, the two were happy. Yuka was still managing the hostess bar, and business was solid. She'd taken a couple days off of work to sort some things out in the apartment. She'd asked Phoenix to drop by her house to help with some DIY, in which he agreed. He'd arrived at her home much later than expected though, it was a very long shift at the bar that night, and when he got in he was exhausted. He asked Yuka if he could run himself a bath to relax, in which she agreed. One he got into, and then fell asleep in. During that time Bro, though, what? Yuka had once again snooped through her boyfriend's phone. And while doing so, she found a few photos of him with another woman. Bruh. She didn't know who she was, and it couldn't be a client because she'd bought him out. This discovery enraged Yuka. She'd noticed for the last couple days that he'd been distant. Oh my god. <laughs> That's fucking terrifying. Bro, that's how people with blue eyes look at you. <laughs> Just waiting for you to compliment their eyes. Hey. Wonderful weather we're having. ...with her. She put that together with these photos, and took it as evidence that he was cheating on her. So how would you confront your partner if you were suspicious over a picture? Discuss any problems in the relationship? Ask if everything's okay? Not for Yuka. That's not how she rolled. After waking up in the bath, Phoenix put on some underwear. He then crept into the bedroom and slid into the bed, trying not to wake Yuka who was supposedly already asleep. And because he was so already exhausted from all of his shifts the last few days, he passed out pretty much immediately. Some time had passed when all of a sudden Phoenix felt an uncomfortable feeling coming from his stomach. He looked down. Oh my god, was he stabbed? That's when he saw a knife lodged in his Bro. Head. Waking up in surprise and terror, he looked back up to see Yuka arched over him. Is this real? Am I dreaming? He thought. Running on pure adrenaline, he shoved her off the bed and ran out the room. Yuka chased Phoenix, grabbing him as he left the front door. Him being taller though, he was stronger and pushed her away as he reached the elevator. By now, Phoenix was losing a lot of blood. The elevator door was closing, and it was heading towards the ground floor. And as the elevator door opened up to the lobby, he lunged forward, almost to safety, and then lost consciousness. Yuka had caught up with Phoenix. He lay collapsed on the floor of the hotel lobby, blood pooling around his body. By now, passers-by had noticed the horrific scene unfolding, and the police, they'd called them immediately. But Yuka, she wouldn't leave his side. She just sat there next to his body, and people were too scared to get close to them in case she did something back. And the following picture is what has made this case notorious. When they got there, police found Yuka sat- I think I've seen this photo floating around, where like she's sitting so nonchalantly next to the body of the person that she just killed. Is that a cigarette? Yeah. Yeah, I killed him. Fuck, like, who is she talking to? Who the fuck are you talking to? Next to his body, drenched in his blood. Casually smoking a cigarette while on the phone to her friend. In the time it had taken police to get to her there, friend. she'd also written a letter with his blood, repeatedly saying, I love you, over and over and over again. Tokyo Metropolitan Police apprehended Yuka immediately. They would find the letter that she wrote along with the knife she'd used to stab Phoenix in her apartment. When the officer had asked her why she did it, she replied with, I was sad and seeking to die. I thought that if I kill him, I could be with him. I thought that That's expressions so such as I like you and I would like to be with you would become reality if we both died. Numerous witnesses watched as police escorted Yuka. So she wanted to die already, but she didn't want to be without him. So kill him first, then yourself. I don't know. She didn't even kill herself. Back of their vehicle. 
and when she got in there, she was smiling. And as for the victim, Phoenix Luna, he was still alive, but only barely. Following the speed in which police and paramedics had got to the apartments, he had not yet passed from his injuries. He was transported to a local hospital where he remained in critical condition, with only a 20% chance to survive. But on July the 1st, an entire month after he was stabbed in the abdomen, to everyone's surprise, Phoenix Luna was alive and recovering. Nice. Friends and fans to say, I thought he died. I'm alive. Yo, I thought, yeah, I thought he died before, before watching this. Back. Before adding, since I was stabbed in the liver, I can't drink. Being a survivor of a horrific experience, Phoenix agreed to attending a local interview. And in that interview, he refused to show any hate towards Yuka. When asked, he said that I do not hold a grudge. He even pleaded with the judge to reduce her sentence. On Thursday the 5th of oh, December... Oh, whoa, whoa. If, okay, if this happened to me, I, I feel like I'm kind of similar in that, like, I don't know, man. Like, it just, it seems very much, like, mental health related. So, like, if I survived, if I was that lucky, I mean, I'm all for rehabilitation. I don't know. Six months for attempted mo Did I get that right? Yep. Three years and six months. On Thursday the 5th of December 2019, the presiding judge handed Yuka a prison term of three years and six months for attempted murder. Yuka and Phoenix previously had made a court settlement for her to pay him 5 million yen. What the fuck? Of 47,000 US dollars. Wait, was, did she have a TikTok? To reduce her time behind bars. At her hearing, the court judge declared, if possible, I want people to be able to lead a normal life rather than paying for their sins. And the story doesn't end there. Following Yuka's attempted murder and imprisonment, she grew an entire online community of fans, most of which are invested in anime culture that possess a deep- Wait, that's her actual page? Wait, I'm going to it. Oh my- Okay, it- it seems like it's her. Let's see the comments. That- this picture is fucking terrifying, by the way. That's so weird. Ew, people are cringe. Y'all see this comment right here? Yandere, I love you, XD, hard eyes, angel. I feel like people know what they're fucking doing. Like, you don't have to use angel specifically to describe her looks. That's no angel. Okay, I'm sorry, that song goes hard hailing her as if she were a real-life Yandere. Her fans believed that she didn't need to be condemned for her actions, only rehabilitated. She even had a GoFundMe-style campaign raised for her. And while the campaign was shut down, at the time she was receiving over $3,800 from 69 contributors, almost the amount needed to get her out of prison. Right. Following Yuka's crime of attempted murder, she is now scheduled to be released from prison in May 2023. And that's the story of Yuka Takeoke. I feel really conflicted about this case. On one hand, I appreciate and admire Phoenix for not holding any grudges, but at the same time, attempted murder, three and a half years, really? If there's anything I would have changed about the outcome, I think she deserved more time. I think three years was too light, at least five. And then yeah, just get hella rehabilitation. But, like, she literally stabbed a guy, that's the thing, with the intention of killing. For cases like this, I am for rehabilitation and, like, getting people back in society, like, and, like, contribute to society as a whole. But it's, like, the actions do decide that. She didn't just try to kill someone, right? She didn't just try in the sense that she got a knife and she was like, Arr! and then, like, the guy was, like, avoiding it and he never got stabbed. She fucking did it in his sleep. He only had a 20% chance of surviving that. So that's why I think three years was not enough punishment for her. He's lucky and she's lucky, honestly. I want you as you are. I think your behavior is so cute. Ooh, ooh, yandere anime girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah.